Hello, this is Mandarin Gaming. I'm Nafanik. Welcome back to Sherlock Holmes Crimes and Punishments. The case is the Abbey Grange Affair. I just started it last time. Holmes receives an urgent late night summon from Inspector Lestrade. Something is wrong at the Abbey Grange. It appears to be a case of murder. Do I travel to Scotland Yard or would, what do I do? The letter is on the table, Holmes. You should take a look. Oh, there is a letter. Well, I see what. Where, where is the letter? Where is the letter? The letter is on the table, Holmes. You should take a look. I'm trying, I'm trying. Oh, this is the... Okay. This is the table. This is the letter. A wax seal with the monogram E.B. I can tell from Lestrade's handwriting that he was in a hurry when he wrote this letter. Did phones exist at the time? Brackenstall, coat of arms. The Brackenstall family, coat of arms. Abbey Grange, Marsham, Kent, 3.30 a.m. My dear Holmes, my dear Mr. Holmes, I should be very glad of your immediate assistance in what promises to be a most remarkable case. It is something quite in your line. Except for releasing the lady, I will see that everything is kept exactly as I have found it. But I beg you not to lose an instant, as it is difficult to leave Sir Eustace there. I'm trying to understand. So there was a lady, and Lestrade uh, released her. Ah, I think that Sir Eustace is a difficult person, so it is difficult to... But why to leave? Why not to keep them? But well, let's find out. So, what is it, Holmes? Promising, as always, it appears to be a case of murder. So you believe that Sir Eustace is dead? I should say so. Lestrade wouldn't have sent for me for less. His writing shows considerable agitation, and he is not an emotional man. These people belong to high society. The quality of the writing paper, the E.B. monogram, their coat of arms. The crime was committed before midnight. Holmes, how can you possibly tell? Well, it is all thanks to Lestrade. He wrote his letter at 3.30 in the morning. Imagine the chain of events before that. The local police had to be called in. Scotland Yard was notified. Lestrade himself had to make haste there and finally compose the letter he sent to me. All of that makes for a fair night's work. It makes sense. Lestrade also speaks of the woman he released. That seems to indicate that she had been held somewhere during the crime. Much time has been wasted. Let us find a cab and go to Abbey Grange immediately. I live in hope of an interesting morning. Well, all my questions have been answered. Let's travel. I guess it's morning. Well, it wasn't morning, but it will be. Very ah, fancy. Mr. Holmes and Dr. Watson, here you are. I'm very glad that you have come, but perhaps I should not have troubled you after all. And why is that? Lady Brackenstall has come to her senses, and she has given so clear an account of the affair that there is not much left for us to do. You remember that Lewisham gang of burglars? What, the three Randalls? Exactly. The father and two sons. It's their work. They stole a silver service, which is of great value. Sir Eustace Brackenstall is dead, then? Yes. His head was knocked in with his own poker. A violent act of aggression. Yes, the poor lady. She has had a most dreadful experience. She was assaulted and tied to a chair. But I think that you would best see her and hear her account of the facts. She is in the morning room with her maid, to raise a right. Where is the body of the deceased? In the dining room. We haven't touched anything. All right. I'm going to examine it. Very good, Watson. Very fancy interior. I'm afraid to move. Picture. Lord Ramsay Brackenstall. Mm-hmm. Who is this? Baron Linden Brackenstall. Awesome. Who's this? Lord Brigham Brackenstall. Is there a kind of a hierarchy pyramid between all them? Who's the most important one? Another picture. 
That looks kind of savage. Sir Warthen Brackenstall. And the last one? Lord George Brackenstall. The Brackenstall family seems rather austere. Mm -hmm. And they don't have women in the family. A door. Another door. And another door. So which way should I go? I suppose that this is the exit, right? Lady Brackenstall awaits you in the morning room. Yeah, I suppose so. Well, this is... Ladies, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Sherlock Holmes. I'm assisting Inspector Lestrade in this investigation. Mr. Holmes, I am the wife of Sir Eustace Brackenstall. We were married only a year ago. I am sorry for your loss. Please accept my deepest condolences. I suppose that it is no use my attempting to conceal that our marriage has not been a happy one. I fear that all would tell you that, even if I were to attempt to deny it. Okay, let's see what she's hiding. Press bruises. Gold brooch, kangaroo and emo Australian origin. Elegant dress. Very nice. Old bruises. I think that she was beaten here. Wedding ring. What else? Where is the last one? What is the last one? Is it something to do with the, her chair? Oh, right. Fresh bruises, but... We saw it already. A pale cheeks! What happened last night? Can you describe to me the events of yesterday evening? Is it really necessary? I have already told Inspector Lestrade all that happened. Yes, madam, it is. I will tell you then. Sir Eustace retired about half past ten. I sat in this room until after eleven, absorbed in a book. Before I went upstairs, I entered the dining room to fetch a candle and... Oh, God. Please, go on. As I approached the French window, I found myself face to face with an elderly, broad-shouldered man who had just stepped into the room. Close behind the first man, I saw two others. One of them struck me a savage blow with his fist and felled me unconscious to the ground. And then? When I came to myself, I found that they had secured me tightly to a dining room chair. It was at that instant my unfortunate husband entered the room. He fought with the intruders? Yes, I think he had heard them, for he was holding his stick. But they were three, and he eventually succumbed. One of them, the elder one, struck him a terrible blow with the poker. I fainted once more. When I opened my eyes, they had withdrawn. Then my brave Teresa came to my assistance. Is something missing? Did these three villains steal anything? Yes. I found that they had taken the silver from the sideboard. But you can see for yourself in the dining room. Not a happy marriage. You mentioned that your marriage was not a happy one. Was there anything specific that was troubling you? He was not a nice man when he was drunk. And he suffered from dark moods, but nothing else. Your line. Old bruises. The bruises on your hands are at least one week old. Your husband caused those bruises? Oh, do you? Yes, he did. He was very angry at the time. Out of control. Again. Sir Eustace was a drunkard. To be tied to such a man for life is worse than death. Your ladyship? So you might be grateful that he was killed. Uh, Teresa? Teresa, I would like to hear your testimony. Certainly, sir. Wrinkles. Well, she doesn't look old. She's beautiful, actually. Caring. Working hands. What's this? Coffee stain. Last night? As I sat by my bedroom window, I saw three men in the moonlight down by the lodge gate. But I thought nothing of it at the time. Oh, if I'd known. And then? I went to bed, and it was more than an hour after that I heard my mistress scream. And down I ran, to find her tied to the chair and him on the floor with his head smashed. That's all I know. Very good. Table examine. 
what's here a newspaper oh that's a very long article family business booming the rental gun is back on the street less than a fortnight ago this infamous family of burglars the rentals as they are known made their appearance by way of a brutal but successful intrusion into one of the wealthier homes in Sydenham. The police is already on their trail. However, the details of the crime are being kept confidential, including that uh, of the name of the victim. A witness was able to provide a precise description of all three men, and this will surely give the police a chance to complete their profile on this family of delinquents. We would take the liberty of reminding our esteemed readers about this highly dangerous band and to provide the full description as it is available at this moment. The gang has been in business for some considerable time, being a family of three, a father and his two sons. The elder, Jack Randall, is a man in his 40s and already grey-haired, while a very height and build. But she told that, she wo that he was very... Kind of white-shouldered, maybe that wasn't him. Being the mastermind behind the burglaries, he retains control over his sons, both of whom are close in age but very different in appearance. The first son, William Randall, is tall and broad-shouldered with a small disproportionate head. Or maybe she was talking about him. The younger brother, Melvin Randall, is uh, of somewhat weaker constitution and is uh, skinny as a rake. The gang is wanted not only for their frequent thefts and break-ins, but for the exceptionally brutal pirate career they enjoyed before returning to England. Be alert and may your valuable stay safe. The description of the Randall gang provided by Lady Brackenstall is identical to the one in the Times article. Maybe she just read about it and um, decided to... Pretend that she saw them. Anything interesting in this room? Oh, there is something interesting. Hmm. But I don't see what this is. Where I should be looking? Oh, oh, oh. oh. Scratches. Hmm. These scratches are most definitely made by the picture frame. Hmm. Are we going to move it? Safe. This is Sir Eustace's safe. There may be something important inside. I must ask Lady Brackenstall to open it. I feel like his uh, desire to open this safe is a bit intrusive. Small table. Photograph. Two women. This photograph of Lady Brackenstall and her maid Teresa was taken at a port. But which one? Fastener. Another fastener. And another. And another one. Back in board. Let's remove this thing. So the lady and her maid came from Australia a year and a half ago on this ship. Sherlock, how could you? Leave the picture alone. Very intrusive. I don't like you today, Sherlock. Let's see. This. Uh, I suppose that this will be the room where um, that sewer used us. Was killed, right? You should examine the body of Sir Eustace Brackenstall. Okay, Watson, that's what I'm going to do. No need to explain your things. French window. Oh, really nice. I I love the best how this game does it, like the sun rays, the trees. This is just masterpiece. I wonder if I'm the only, the only one. I guess not. Probably not. Another picture. The hunting scene. Are we going to explore every picture in this room? A trapper's hut. Not every, but selectively. Hunting rifles. Antique hunting weapons. The antique? I cannot see. It's a dark chair. So this is the chair that she was tied to. Piece of rope. Sailor's knot. That's interesting. This rope was handled by the murderers. We need a scent hound to follow their trail. I will take it with me. So Toby are going to do that for you. This is the chair that Lady Brackenstall was tied to. Mm -hmm. I figured this out myself, Sherlock. Uh, I don't know. There are so many th other things to steal, but let's see. 
bottle. These wine bottles are expensive and mostly from France. But they were not stolen. Maybe they just did, don't appreciate uh, the value of wine. It could happen. Candlestick. This candlestick is valuable. It is interesting that it was not also stolen. True. So my initial thoughts were kind of right. Sherlock Holmes agrees with me to some point, probably. Silverware box. An empty silverware box. It appears that the intruders have stolen the contents. I bet we will find it somewhere in the garden. Empty silverware. A bottle of wine is missing here. The criminals did not thoroughly ransack the house. They only took a little silverware. Hmm, maybe they didn't have time, to be fair. Another picture. The hunting scene. Another hunting scene. Uh, this door leads to the upstairs bedrooms. Apparently the criminals did not venture there. Will we venture there? Glasses. Decanter. A decanter standing next to the open bottle. An inseparable pair indeed. Wine bottle. Chateau Calon Segur. French wine. Grand Cru. The one from the wine rack. Glass. This glass has some wine traces, but no visible bees wing. What's bees wing? Bees wing. A light flaky deposit found in port and some other bottle aged wines. Another glass? There is bees wing at the bottom, as if the wine had not been decanted before being poured. Awesome. The problem is that my screen is very dark. I cannot see. And the third one. This glass has some wine traces, but no visible bees wing. It is rather strange that only one of these glasses has dregs of bees wing inside it, while the other two are clear. I'm curious. So, um, decanter is used... I'm not interested in wines, right? So I don't know what he means when he tells that those two glasses that don't have a bees wing they were poured from the decanter, but the third one that has that bees wing, it was poured directly from the bottle. I didn't know that decanter has any anything, like literally any, any use, any purpose, any... I didn't know that it's a useful thing. That's funny, that's literally its, um, that's literally its name. A decanter is a vessel that is used to hold the decantation of liquid which may contain sediment. I love learning new stuff. Okay, and we have a body here, but did we fa finish with the pictures? No, we didn't. <laughs> a fur trader's cabin. What's this picture? This was, was another picture. Come on. A deer hunt. A deer hunt. A fur trader's cabin. What about that la the large picture? Nothing about it? The set is beautiful. Okay, let's look at the body. So, Watson? What have you learned from examining Sir Eustace's body? Well, I can confirm that the death was instant. Sir Eustace was facing his attacker when he received the blow to his head. There are no other apparent injuries. Head. Well, this is how he was killed. The head was cracked with the force of the blow. Poker? That must be the murder weapon. Do we take fingerprints? When this became a thing, fingerprints? Feet. Barefoot. He had therefore been in bed and did not have time to fully dress. Stick. Quite a large stick, a formidable weapon. Mm -hmm. Fireplace great. Blood. It is covered in blood. Sir Eustace might have struck his head upon it while falling from the blow. That is one possible explanation. Oh, there is something hidden here. Mantelpiece. Okay, mantelpiece. Cut piece of rope. It appears that the bell rope was cut by someone taller than me. Now let's read about two people we've met. First, Lady Breckenstall. Lady Breckenstall, not quite 25, is from a wealthy Australian family. She has been married for a little more than a year. She has, in all probability, suffered physical violence over the course of the last fortnight. The lady lives a solitary lifestyle, seldom venturing outside. Teresa. Teresa is very attached to her mistress and has known her for a considerable time. She is the only 
resident servant at the Abbey Grange, looking for serving and nursing Lady Brackenstall. She would not hesitate to protect her in the event of any trouble. Why would she kill her husband? I mean, could be. But like, we don't know what feelings are involved there. Three wine glasses. Dialogue. I need to talk to someone about these three wine glasses. Two glasses with traces of decanted wine, but without beeswing. And a third glass with wine and a large amount of beeswing were found in the dining room. Sailor's note. Perform analysis. A piece of bell rope that was used to tie Lady Brickenstall to a chair. It may still have a scent of the intruders and uh, breaking stall safe. There is a locked safe in the morning room at the Abbey Grange estate. It may contain some important information. Photograph note, old bruises, Lestrade statement, Lestrade, Lestrade, Lestrade's statement. Inspect the room where Lady Breckenstall is resting and collect Toby from Baker Street and follow the scent trail. But first I want to go out this French window and see what we have here in the garden. Why Watson didn't join me? I don't think I will be able to find anything here without Toby. Why do I think that I will be exploring this place as Toby? Toby would be used probably or maybe if it's something that was buried, then Toby will, will be able to help, right? Oh, we have a shed here. What do we have in this shed here? Plenty of things, but I cannot go inside. For a second I thought you were alive. Hey, newspaper. And the glasses. Okay, Lady Breckenstall, forgive Sherlock Holmes for being so intrusive, but uh, he's going to ask you some very inappropriate questions. There are three glasses on the table. There are three glasses on the dining room table. I was wondering if... Oh, I forgot. When I came to myself the first time, each of them had a glass in his hand. They might have been a father and his two sons. They talked together in whispers, and then they left. So one glass is definitely faked. Or maybe two. I think one. The safe? Lady Brackenstall, could you open this wall safe? No, it is my husband's safe. I do not know the combination. We have to open it. Your ladyship. Okay, I definitely don't want to think about her as a killer, as a killer, but she's definitely suspicious. But at the same time, like, Sherlock, why would you need to... Let us try to open this safe. This safe can be cracked. I only have to pay attention. The dial will vibrate when it is set to the correct number. Is it 18 or 17? Was this correct? Maybe that was 18? Or 17? I did I... It's hard to tell. Maybe it's both. Okay, let's start, let's start a new, but now I will rotate it um, right instead of left. No, I will rotate it left then instead of right. It's definitely 18. But nothing else is vibrating. It's kind of between 17 and 18. If I click right now, confirm. Okay, uh, okay, let's look at the next one. It's kind of vibrating, but not... Oh, caught it. And the last one... Done. What do we have in here? Medical report. Sir Eustace, your current physical and mental state is of great concern. There are several signs of hepatic decom decompensation. The last time that we met, your eyes were bloodshot and your skin was ting tinged with yellow. There is a particular odor from your breath that is common in those suffering from liver damage. 
Then there are then there are the lung abscesses. It's not abscesses, it's kind of abscesses. I need to I need to ask Google to pronounce this for me. Abscesses. No, I was right the first time. Abscesses or abscesses. No, not not entirely right, but more right than the second time <laughs> that we have discussed. The leg cramps you have described to me are caused by by an alteration to the nervous system, which in turn is caused by an excess of alcohol. That includes the tremors. Your liver seemed excessively hard at the time of your examination, which is a sign of an evolving cirrhosis. There are also signs of ascites fluid in the peritoneal cavity, which is evident with your swollen stomach. The pain beneath your left rib indicates a pancreatic malady, which may lead to fatal and fulminant pancreatitis. Your condition may pose a risk, a risk to others. Your excessive alcohol consumption lowers your self-control and heightens your aggression. I am available to help you with this problem. There are a number of treatment options. So, like, at least he was concerned. A lot of money. It is common practice to keep one's valuables in a safe behind a painting. It should not really pose a challenge for a criminal. You think so? Maybe, like, if you could open it, maybe they could open this too. Antique coins, possibly of value, but they're scattered without care. So what would be our next step? Our next step is that we need to talk to Lady Breckenstall. Oh, what a horrible thing to have happened. Not to her. Maybe to Watson? Where is Watson, by the way? He's not here. So what, he just stayed where I left him? Right. The death was instant. Dialogue. A medical report found inside the morning room safe, which states that um, Sir Eustace Breckenstall endured poor health. He suffered an addiction to alcohol and a nervous disorder. So, who should I talk to about this? Not Watson, not his wife. Lestrad? Sir Eustace's reputation. What do you know about Sir Eustace, Inspector? What was his reputation? A charming man when sober, but an absolute demon when he was drunk. In such moments he was apparently capable of anything. Why, once he splashed fuel on Lady Brackenstall's dog and set it alight. Another day he threw a decanter of wine at Miss Wright's head. Hmm, the alcohol seemed to madden him. To the point that we were forced to intervene several times to avoid a scandal. Just a scandal? You don't care about well-being of the people that surround him? Can I try, try again? Oh, what a horrible thing to have happened. What about Teresa? Oh, Teresa wants to talk, okay. History of violence. Sir Eustace's doctor speaks of his violent behaviour. Yes, Sir Eustace was an extremely violent man. A detestable human being, to be more precise. It is true that he once threw a decanter at me, and all because I dared to stand up to him in defence of my mistress. Sly devil. God forgive me that I should speak of him so now that he's dead. But a devil he was, if ever one walked the earth. We met him only 18 months ago. She'd only just arrived in London. Yes, it was her first voyage. She'd never been from home before. One with his title and his money and his false London ways. If she made a mistake, she has paid for it, if ever a woman did. She doesn't have any friends here, so it was especially hard for her. Hmm. A lot to think about. A lot of clues. Glass with bees wing. Two glasses. Three people. There were three people drinking wine out of these glasses. One of the three probably prefers wine with bees wing. Oh, so that could happen too. Okay, two people. There were two people drinking wine out of these glasses. The remaining glass with the bees wing cons consisted solely of the dregs from the other two glasses. Let's try two people. It's too early to tell. No personal life from Australia. No. A Acquaintance. A lady Breckenstall married Sir Eustace shortly after arriving in England and remained at home during that time. 
There is little possibility that she or her maid are acquainted with anyone in the country. Lady is acquainted with someone from the Rock of Gibraltar. Well, considering that there was a sailor not, not, then maybe? But all this just assumptions, too early to tell. Fireplace great. Bent poker? No. Violent behavior? No. Mm, dead body? N dead body? Yes. Deadly accident. The death of Sir Eustace could have been due to his accidentally striking his head on a fireplace grate. Maybe that was an accident. Maybe that was a case of self-defense. Self so these two contradict each other? Why they would contradict each other? Violent behavior? Mm, inspector's tale? Sir Eustace was violent towards his wife. We know that. Dead body, burnt poker, poker blow. The death of Sir Eustace could have been due to a poker blow. I mean, it could be that first it was a poker blow and then he f he has fallen and uh, he struck his head on a fireplace grate. It could be two causes. I guess that we will find out it only after the autopsy. Randall's are well known, criminals identified. Randall's blamed. The robbery was faked and the whole story invented in order to blame Sir Eustace's death on the Randall's. Randall gang. The testimonies and evidence match and point to the Randall gang. I think that they are blamed, but I mean, who knows? And uh, the last one, don't fit. Okay, let's go. Take our faithful Toby. Oh, I had some analysis to perform. Examine the rope. Let us see how the rope was cut. The fibers at the end of the rope are smoothly cut. Let us try to find out what tool was used to cut the rope. Scissors. Let's try. The fibers from this cut appear to be different. Mm -hmm. Surprisingly. Cutters. The fibers from this cut appear to be different. What else could be used? Oh, there is a knife. If I cut the rope with a knife, it matches the original. It must have been a very sharp knife. Sharp knife. <laughs> exactly, sharp knife. Not a rope? Sailor background. The rope was cut once with a sharp knife and tied quickly in sailor's knots. That could indicate that the intruder had a sailor's background. I don't think that Randall's had a sailor's background. What did they? Okay, Toby, let's go. Come on, Toby. We need the best nose in the British Empire on this case. Oh, look at this. Toby is with Sherlock. Search, Toby. Am I going to play the Toby now? Yes, oh, I love this. I remember this exercise from the, the, the Devil's Daughter my favorite part of the game. Well, not favorite, but one of favorite parts. Call Sherlock. I can run, but my legs are very short, so not very fast. Okay. Oh, the shed that I wanted to go into. As always, my instincts are right. Sniff. The intruders entered the shed for some reason when they were making off with the silverware. Oh, we, we're not finished? Aha, uh -huh, there is continuation. The well. The scent leads to the well. I should check it. Still not finished. Where this will lead us to? Huh. The wall. The intruder's trail is lost behind this wall. The criminals left the house through the French window. They walked to the shed then across to the well, before fleeing by climbing over the wall. I wonder why they chose such a winding route. Let's find out. First, the shed. Look. 
This hook might be useful. Toolbox. Small gardening tools. Nothing of great interest. Suitcase. This old suitcase sounds hollow. It must be empty. Bags. Bags of seed. Some empty bags were recently moved. That's it? I expected something more. Okay, the well. What do we have here inside the well? Oh, we have a glittering object. There's something glittering at the bottom there. But how can I reach it? I suppose that we can remove the bucket and uh, attach your hook that you just found very conveniently. And now, what? Oh, windlass. This is called windlass? Let's open the bag. This is hardly a coincidence. You tell me. A fork. Let's rotate it. And we have the coat of arms. The Brackenstall coat of arms. It appears that we have found the stolen silverware. The reader will be greatly appreciative about this. Okay, what about the wall? We are going to check the wall. The wall. The intruder's trail is lost behind this wall. I thought maybe we could, you know, look at the look at the soil, at the earth. Maybe we could find something. Isn't it gorgeous? Silverware found. Criminals identified. Robbery is the motive. Robbery is confirmed as the motive for the crime. The criminals may have plans to return for the silverware that they dumped. Would they? Imitated robbery. The robbery could have been imitated to explain Sirius's death. The silverware was not supposed to be found. I think it's imitated robbery. But of course I could be wrong. Murderous visitor. Sir Eustace was murdered by the one person who was visiting that night. It was he who tied up Lady, Lady Breckenstall. He is tall and strong. Well then, she might have acquainted a sailor and they conspired to kill him together. Look for sailor. The person who was visiting that night was probably a sailor. So how we are going to search for sailor suspects? I also need... I didn't notice that I needed to search archives. Search for possible sailor suspects. How do I do this? Through my um, friend... What? What's his name? That boy. Watkins? No. Wilkins? Something like that. Don't remember. Through his um, boy friend. <laughs> that didn't sound right. Oh, maybe from uh, f through Inspector Lestrade. I have the stolen silverware. Inspector, I have recovered the stolen silverware. You are a wizard, Mr. Holmes. And where is it? In the garden well. Excuse me? Unique, isn't it? Rather absurd. What is the point of stealing silverware and then throwing it down into a well? Perhaps it was used as a temporary hiding place. Or simply the thieves wanted to get rid of it. It is up to us to solve this mystery. Do I need to talk to this woman? Let's try Lady Breckenstall first. Oh, she's willing to talk. Your silverware has been found. We found your silverware, Lady Breckenstall. It had not been taken very far. Is that true? I am very thankful to you, Mr. Holmes. That's it? Sometimes he's very intrusive, sometimes he's just very satisfied with the first answer that he's got. We found your mistress's silverware. Oh, that's good news. You really are as clever as they say. Indeed. Are they pretending or are they really surprised and grateful? What are you looking at? Can I join you? Back home. So, archives. Oh, there are letters. Murder in... Oh, this is our, our old cases. The Times. A colossal scandal in high society. The well-known and remarkable archaeologist, the pride of our nation, Sir Rodney Bentcliffe, has been found murdered. The crime took place at the Roman bath in Strand Lane, the location of the archaeologist's most recent research. But what is the most truly shocking is that the murder of Sir Rodney was at the hand of his former friend and partner, Percival Blinkhorn. The death sentence is the only possible punishment for this breed of villain. 
Another one. Mycroft's resentment. Sherlock, dear brother. You have made the most terrible mistake once again. Are you quite aware of the fact that the Empire is at the brink of international conflict? How could you pass this incredibly sensitive case to those feather-brained Scotland Yard bobbies? Very well. Yes, they caught the criminals. But have you not read the newspapers? The great fuss that has risen around it? They are generalizing all Mexicans. And as you may know, the Empire has arrangements with a great many va varied and loyal Mexican enterprises. You should think about that. The Harpooner's Revenge The grotesque murder of the former Captain Peter Carey, known in private as Black Peter, has been resolved. The evidence that Scotland Yard received from a trustworthy source was more than sufficient to conclude that the murderer of Peter Carey was Pablo Coventrao, one of the Careys former Harpooners. However, lawful justice could not be awarded. Coven Trow was found dead of natural causes, probably from his remorse at committing such a terrible crime. Research. So, this should be history again, and no, not history, newspapers again, and same year again. Yeah, Bancliffe's mummy and Rock of Gibraltar's arrival. Arrival of the Rock of Gibraltar as ship returned. The Rock of Gibraltar, a bulk carrier from the Adelaide Southampton London line, Connard Building James Street London, has returned from a six month voyage through India, New Zealand and Australia. The ship brought to England Miss Mary Fraser, the heiress of the Fraser family owning land and tin mines in Australia. Is this her? All right, this reportedly beautiful young lady is presently engaged to Sir Eustace Breckenstall, one of the wealthiest gentlemen in Kent. Here it is. Wiggins was his name. Task for Wiggins. The address of the Rock of Gibraltar ship owner. We can find the crew list there. The shipping company, the Adelaide Southampton London line and its address. Interesting. It must be the place where they keep the records, including the one for the crew of the Rock of Gibraltar. I think that if you pretend you're from Scotland Yard, they'll give it to you without any problems. But I have another solution. I'll call in the specialist. Gibraltar? Hello, Wiggins! My dear friend. Wiggins, could you come upstairs, please? Doesn't get old. I'm not old. Grown up. At your service, Mr. Holmes. I need a register, my young friend. If you could borrow it, there will be half a guinea for every one of you. I need the crew list of the Rock of Gibraltar in 1893 and their current employment. I'm straight on it, Mr. Holmes. Do you really think they'll find it, Holmes? My secret police is better than the Yard in many ways. Three hours later. Here it is, Mr. Holmes. But we can't take it back. It's too risky. Put it on the table. I'll take care of it. Good work, young Wiggins. This table? Yeah. This list shows the senior officers of the Rock of Gibraltar, on which Lady Brackenstall and her maid made their voyage. Lady Brackenstall does not know anyone in England. This must mean that someone on this list is our mysterious visitor. And these are the lists of the senior officers of the Adelaide Southampton London Line ships. Let us find out who was in London upon November the 7th. Charles, Jack, Henry, Ernest, 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 I think it's it. Ernest, Thomas, Herbert, William, Archibald, James, Henry. Well, we see one Henry. Oh no, wait, this is, this doesn't fit because he arrived in London later than the murder date i think that he will arrive okay then the next list um, i think no one's here oh, no wait i'm confused here all right this is departure from adelaide and arrival in london while the next one was the opposite way no yeah departure from london and arrival in adelaide so no one here right 
because everyone from this list would be on the ship right now. Probably someone in this list. Jack Crocker, Duncan, Peter, Nail, George, Frank, I think Jack, Mr. Jack Crocker, Captain. Mr. Jack Crocker was in London upon the date of the crime and he is due to depart in two days. Oh, so that's not the only option. Okay, let's continue. Well, no one from this list. And no one from this list. And no one from this list. I don't understand. Why are you, you, why are you not satisfied with this name? This list shows that... Because I don't see anyone else who could have been that. Maybe there's another person on this list too. Charles. There is no Charles. Henry. There is no Henry. Ernest. There is no Ernest. Herbert. Herbert. There is no one with this name. William. Again, no one? That's the only... I will have to use this Henry southward because even though it wouldn't be him because he hasn't arrived yet, because it's only 7th of November, well, he will arrive in uh, on uh, the 12th of November, but that's the only other name that you can find. Wait, not, not the only. Ernest to Henry. This officer is still at sea, therefore he cannot be involved. Oh, so you want me to go through all of them? Really, Sherlock? This officer is still at sea, therefore he cannot be involved. I know that. That's why I didn't even try to investigate the possibility. Okay, Charles. This officer was on a ship that sailed half a month ago. He wasn't in London at the time of the crime. This officer was on a ship that sailed half a month ago. He wasn't in London at the time of the crime. I know that, Sherlock. We could have saved time. Thomas Walker? This officer is still at sea, therefore he cannot be involved. And the last one. This officer is still at sea, therefore he cannot be involved. Captain Jack Crocker is our mysterious visitor. He was the only one around at the time of the murder. Marvels. Would have saved time if you just accepted him as my first uh, choice. Call Crocker to confront him. How did we call people in those times? Letters? A uh, uh, courier? This Crocker, do you think... It would be interesting to meet him. Our young friend should be able to find him. That's how. Paul Crocker. Through window again? How do... Oh, Wiggins, you are still here. Wiggins, could you find a way to bring this Captain Crocker here to us? Here? Holmes, that could be dangerous. No problem, Mr. Holmes. Some time later... Mr. Holmes? I was informed that you were looking for me, and I'd like to know why. Yes, it is important that we talk. You will soon understand why. Let's investigate your appearance first. Eyes. Clear look. Honest. Very good. Very handsome beard, Sherlock. Why don't you appreciate the beard? Strong build. Okay. Fingers? Nothing on fingers? Dirt? No? Newspaper ink. Shoes. Clean boots. Hi. Sea knife. Lady Brackenstall. You are acquainted with Lady Mary Brackenstall, are you not? Yes, I think I do remember her. From when I was first officer, but I still don't see... It seems your relationship went beyond that of mere passenger and first officer. How dare you? Indeed, how reckless a feeling is love. Particularly if one is prepared to commit a murder in its name. Explain yourself this instant. You are aware that the murder made the headlines of the morning press. You read the newspaper report, but to your dismay found it much fabricated. Once you learned that I wanted to see you, you came straight away. You needed to know what I had found. You? And what do you know? That evening, you were with Lady Brackenstall, despite the danger. I'm not afraid, Mr. Holmes. Besides, all of this is just guesswork. You would be right if there was no evidence. What then? You tell me too, because honestly it could be anyone. Well, I mean, you think that that's the only possibility, but um, who knows? You tied her up. Lady Brackenstall was tied to a chair on the night of the murder. And it was you who tied her up. You call that evidence? Sailor's knots. Yes, as she was tied with a sailor's knot. 
your handiwork. So, it's a sailor who's done it. That proves nothing, Mr. Holmes. I'm not the only sailor in London right now. Your theory is flawed, anyway. On the night of the murder, I was aboard the Shark. I was supervising the repair of a porthole. At night? It was an emergency. There was a leak. You can ask the ship's carpenter. He can confirm. I'm sure that he can. Perfect. In that case, we have nothing more to talk about. Good evening, gentlemen. Holmes, what should we do now? Would you like to check his alibi? No. There is no doubt that these men will testify in his favour, and there will be no way to check. So, what then? So, we must work with what we have. We have all the puzzle pieces. Now I understand why you dissected the bell rope. That's it? That's the case? The only thing that I need to, to do now is just decide who... Who's the murderer? Captain Jack Crocker. Crocker is a fine man of the sea, aged in his 40s. He is a capable, honest man and well-educated despite not being very wealthy. He was in haste and still he read the morning newspaper and cleaned his boots before heading out. Crocker's statement, Captain's. Captain Crocker. Crocker's involvement. Crocker is lying. His involvement is clear. He appeared as soon as he heard that I was looking for him, thus signaling his guilt. Captain Crocker was aboard the sharp on the night of the murder. He was not afraid to confront me. He had a confident demeanor. Ah, this is difficult because I don't know. I mean, if not Crocker, then who else? Let's try this, this path. The captain is the killer. The captain is the killer, Sir Eustace was murdered by one person who was visiting that night. The murderer is tall and agile and a high-ranking sailor. Arrest Captain Crocker, I don't want to arrest him. Absolve Captain Crocker, the murder was committed in self-defense. Jack Crocker defended a woman against a violent and uh, this deep so maniacal man. The mystery is solved, but you decide to keep it secret. There is no need to inform the police. I prefer this this one. But, uh, also, I'm not sure that he killed him. Wiggins, could you ask Mr. Crocker to come here again, please? Right away. So he was waiting. Why did you make me come here again, Mr. Holmes? It is over. I know that it was you who killed Sir Eustace Brackenstall. What? I know, because of the height at which the rope was cut. The knife used was a sea knife, the knots were sailor's knots, and not least the sheer force that was put behind the killing blow. And because you are the only one who knows Lady Mary Brackenstall in London. And because you love her. It's true. It is time for you to tell us the whole truth. I admit that I loved Mary madly from the first day that I met her. But I never did come to visit her, for I believed that she was in a happy household. When I talked to her maid who told me everything, I was insane with rage. I was due to set sail for six months away. I wanted only to see her again. But it turned into a damnable nightmare when he barged in. He dared raise his hand to her. He! He was not even worthy of licking her boots. Oh, I regret nothing. I admit I killed the monster out of love for her. She will forgive me if she is able. Lady Brackenstall already forgave you. She said nothing. Mary. But that makes her an accomplice as well as her maid. It places her in danger yet again. Mr. Holmes. You would not have managed to protect her. Till I die, do you hear me? Here is a letter that sets everything clear. And it is the one that should be disclosed to the police. I am the only culprit. Mary had nothing to do with it. Now it is time to end this. I didn't want to kill him, honestly. Please forgive me, Captain Crocker. I wished only to test your sincerity, 
and your words and deeds have far exceeded my expectations. See here, Captain Crocker, we'll do this in due form of law. You are the prisoner. Watson, you are a British jury. Captain Crocker, the evidence shows that you acted without premeditation and used reasonable force to protect an innocent victim from her husband's brutality. Your devotion pushed you to attempt to kill yourself in order to protect the one you love. Now, what say you, gentlemen of the jury? Not guilty, my lord. Vox populi, vox dei. You are acquitted, Captain Crocker. So long as the law does not find some other victim, you are safe from me. Mr. Holmes. It is a great responsibility that I take upon myself, but I will give Lestrade an excellent lead, and if he can't avail himself of it, I can do no more. Come back to your lady in a year, and may her future and yours justify us in the judgment which we have pronounced this night. Inspector, I am afraid that the murderers have escaped us. What? Do you mean to tell me that you failed? Never thought I'd live to see the day. I mentioned the murderers, not the case. It is obvious that the crime was committed by three criminals who cannot be the Randalls. You really think so? You only need to find a gang of three thugs wandering around. I can trust you to do that. If they exist, I'll catch them. You'll find someone, I have no doubt of it. Goodbye, Inspector. Come on, do this Strad really believes uh, Sherlock Holmes? It's obvious that he's lying. Yeah, that's the correct one. Except decision, yeah. People solve the case the same way. Wow, for once I'm in majority. Oh no, people made the same moral choice. Well, I'm in the majority, but not as much. I thought that uh, this was the moral choice. Okay, let's continue. The Q Gardens drama. Hmm. Holmes, for heaven's sake, whatever is going on? Oh, hello, Watson. You're early. Did you kill all of your patients? What? Holmes, where have all these wretched bees come from? I increased the temperature of the room so as to prevent them from hibernating. I needed to take a sample of honey. But it worked, Watson. We will have honey all year round. <laughs> Ridiculous and dangerous. And funny. They're domestic bees. Apis mellifera, such industrious workers. Anyway, Watson, I am sorry, but I must leave you. I'm in rather a hurry. You have a new case? Yes, but nothing as thrilling as this experiment, a theft of plants at the Royal Botanic Gardens in Kew. I'm helping a minister who's an old friend of mine. You can join me if you like. Well, I'll admit that I'd far rather accompany you than remain alone here with these workers of yours. Besides, you'll need a helping hand with the flowers you're intending to bring back. Watson, however did you guess? For the great Sherlock Holmes to bother with the theft of plants. Come on, admit that you're planning to spoil your little bees with some rare pollens. <laughs> Since when did I become so transparent? Let us go. Well, till next time. I finished this part here, I solved the case, so it's time for me to go. Thank you for watching, see you next time, bye bye.